Hello, I'm Tim Lawton, Member of Parliament for East Worthing and Shoreham, and I'm just producing this podcast on the news we've just had in the last few days that the post office intend to pull out of their Crown post offices in Shoreham and in Lansing, which is very alarming and I'm very concerned about it. Now, um, we only heard this news in the last few days. I actually heard um, about it because it was on social media and a constituent contacted um, me, and then eventually I got a call from the uh, post office to alert me to what was going on. So the communications from the post office, I have to say, have been really poor, which I'm very angry um, about. And um, for those of you who've been around for a while, you will remember the big battles we've had in recent years to try and save some of the sub-post offices, which have been part of the post office's closure programme. You may remember we had that great march of people uh, from the uh, sub-post office in Bonus Avenue in um, Sompting all the way to the Lansing Main Post Office, uh, where we tried to save that one unsuccessfully. And I have to say that every sub-post office marked for closure in the past, they have gone ahead with that closure, despite all the campaigning that many people have, uh, have done. So we need to take this threat very um, seriously. So what I did is to ask for an urgent meeting with the post office which I held um, yesterday and that's why I want to update you on exactly the facts that were given to me. And tomorrow I will be in Shoreham meeting members of staff uh, from the uh, Shoreham Crown office as well to hear about their concerns and raise some of the questions that they want to raise with, uh, with me. Now what exactly is happening is the post office uh, nationally own some 11,000, well they don't own, they run 11,600 sub-post offices which are in other shops or run as uh, small combined shops and, uh, and post offices and then they directly run 300 crown offices and it's these crown offices that are affected by the announcement this week that they are going to pull out of 37 of those 300 and it just so happens that two of them are the main post offices in my constituency in Shoreham and in um, Lansing. Uh, that would mean we would have just five sub-post offices left in the whole of uh, Ada, most of them not being in the town or village centres uh, as well, um, and then whatever is going to replace these two Crown um, post offices. Now, the post office say that both Shoreham and Lansing are loss-making. I find that quite hard to believe, particularly in the case of Lansing, where after all the closures we've had, there is just the main post office and a very small sub-post office down on the Brighton Road, well out of the village centre, to cater for a population combined of Lansing and something of some 27,000 people. Um, in addition to that, we have in Lansing the second largest business park in the whole of um, West Sussex on the Lansing um, business park, of which obviously they have a big need for postal services uh, as well. And on top of all of that, of course, we've seen in recent months and years the closure of a lot of the bank branches, particularly in Lansing and in Shoreham. And one of the reasons the banks give is that many of their banking services can now be carried on at a post office uh, anyway. So that trade should have, in many cases, have gone to the post office. And, but even with all of that, the post office are saying that those two branches are loss-making, and that because they uh, have a reduced subsidy from the government, it used to be 200 million, it's now down to 80 uh, million, they have to cut their um, costs, and that's why these two uh, post offices are in the frame. I just don't think it's been managed very well, and frankly, they should have used that as an opportunity to get that business, which is up for grabs from the, um, from the, the bank, to market their services better, to get more people m using those post offices, making it profitable, and therefore... Um, sustainable, but that has not happened. So what they are saying is that they will be ending their operations in the Shoreham and Lansing Crown offices. They have put an advert, which will be effective for next month, inviting other people to take on those post office um, facilities. In the case of Shoreham, it will be in probably another shop. In the case of Lansing, they are offering either it will be moved to another shop or if somebody wants to move into the Lansing Crown office and run the post office there alongside another retail operation, there is that option as well. Both these buildings are held leasehold by the post office. You'll be aware, of course, that both these Crown post offices have sorting offices um, attached. They are separate from the uh, post office. 
Um, I think they've got a separate uh, lease, and as far as I've been told, there are no plans to move those sorting um, offices. But I've not been told otherwise at this um, at this stage. So um, what's going to happen is this advert is going to be um, placed, uh, and then after a month, if various people have come forward to say yes, we'll take on the post office um, business, they will spend some four to six months doing a viability assessment to see if uh, that is uh, sustainable um, or not, and then we'll come up with their um, preferred partner, and then they'll consult the public um, on it. If after all of that um, they go ahead with somebody, then there'll be another few months where they may have to adapt premises and things like that before the Crown Post Office is closed and the new service goes um, live. They do insist that the post offices will be replaced with a post office in some form. My concern, obviously, is to make sure that all the services readily available now will still be there and equally as um, accessible. So if these changes go ahead, and I fear the post office are determined to make them go ahead, it's probably going to come in at the earliest, the back end of 2017, or more likely into 2018. Now, what are my concerns here? Well, the Communication Workers' Union, who's obviously done some work, their members work for the post office, on some of the other post office closures, which have then been relocated in um, shops. And typically, they go into places like WH Smiths. Now, WH Smiths have a 10-year agreement with the post office, and they already run over 100 post office branches within WH Smith shops. And, of course, there is a WH Smith branch uh, just down the road in Shoreham, and there's a WH Smith branch almost opposite the post office in Lansing. The post office tell me that they've not made any arrangements with uh, any prospective um, bidder to take on that, uh, that service at the, uh, at the moment, but I would have thought that WH Smiths is one of the favourites to, to do that, but at this stage, it's open to anybody to apply in the next month. I just want to be clear here as well, because I've had a lot of emails and people tweeting and on social media saying, oh, this is all down to the privatisation of the post office. The, the post office has not been privatised. This is completely separate from the Royal Mail. The post office, which is responsible for running the post office uh, branches and the post office services up and down the country, of which there are 11,600 sub-post offices and 300 crown post offices before these closures, that is 100% owned by the um, public. The Royal Mail, which delivers your uh, letters and parcels, is partly privatised, partly floated on the stock exchange and partly owned by um, staff members and partly owned by the um, government. But the two are completely different um, businesses, just to avoid that um, confusion. So in my conversations with the managers from the post office, I raised a series of questions about the level of service that we can expect by whoever takes this, um, this on. Because research by the communication workers has shown that there are concerns about will there be the same number of uh, uh, desks for people um, serving customers, that the queues might be longer, uh, it takes more time to do uh, transactions, uh, is there going to be enough space? And if you know the shops at WH Smith, say in Lansing and uh, Shoreham, they're not huge shops. And if you've now got to have uh, a large amount of people going and queuing up for counters as, uh, as well. Is this going to be sustainable? What about disability access as well? They tell me that they'll be covered by all the disability access uh, regulations and they would may have to have uh, automatic doors and things like uh, and things like that. However, the experience is that actually the, the service level satisfaction has gone down as a uh, result of moves out of the main post offices. So they need to prove the case of what they're going to do to make sure that services uh, does not um, deteriorate. Um, then there's also what happens to the staff. And again, I'm concerned uh, some of the figures which show that actually very few of the staff who have been uh, what's called tupid across to these new arrangements have actually stayed uh, with the post office um, branches. So that's why I'm meeting the staff tomorrow to gauge their concerns and uh, what they would like me to raise with the post office as, uh, as, as well. Uh, and then there's the whole issue about uh, disability um, access and whether there's enough space, as I've, uh, I've said. So this is a big concern because post offices are still at the heart of our community, they're at the heart of our, our shopping um, uh, centres, 
And if in any way they are downgraded, there's got to be a knock-on effect for the local community. We have, a, as we know, a, a higher than average elderly population who still tend to use services like the post office face-to-face -face much more than doing things online um, these days. And there's also the question of, I've asked the post office, well, if they go into a WH Smith's or another shop and then that shop closes after a year or two and they decide that it's not working for them, then what happens to the post office? So there's a lot of questions still to be answered. So this is what's going to um, happen. The post office uh, have started this process and they will see who applies to take on their um, services. And when they've got a clear prospect, then they will have pu public consultations. They've suggested they'll do a public drop-in uh, event to explain what change is being proposed at some stage. I have specifically asked them if they would do a public meeting, which I'm happy to arrange and, and chair, so they can take questions from um, an audience of, uh, of people uh, to really drill down to some of the detail of exactly what is going to be um, proposed. I've also asked if the post office will come and give a, uh, a private briefing to local councillors and some of the business leaders as well to give them the sort of detail which they've given um, me as soon as uh, possible. So our councillors and others can disseminate that, that information to all our um, constituents. Um, I think we need to make it clear to the post office that we are not going to take these proposals lying down and that the post offices are really important for our uh, community and we are really concerned about the prospect of losing those main post offices in Shoreham and in Lansing. Now I know various local people have already started uh, petitions which is um, great but what's more effective than petitions is people writing letters with their own experiences of why they rely so heavily on that post office, why the staff there are doing a fantastic job, why if it were to uh, move um, we've got serious concerns about the impact it would have on, on people's lives. So what I'm asking you to do, by all means sign all the um, petitions, at the appropriate time, come to the meetings which you'll organise with the post office. But in the meantime, please write to the post office in your personal terms as to why you think this is a bad idea and what your concerns are. And if you can copy those letters or emails into me, I can use them as ammunition in my ongoing discussions with the post office management uh, as well. Uh, underneath this uh, podcast, I give the details of exactly uh, who and where you write or email um, to. So I'm afraid it doesn't rain but it pours. With all the problems we've got about um, the rail service, and I've gone into detail on that on other podcasts, about the uh, school um, uh, funding situation, ongoing um, issues on the A27, now we've got threats facing a uh, um, post office. So that's going to keep me uh, even busier than I have been. But I'm really concerned that we make sure the post office are left in no uncertain terms about the importance of these two main post office branches to our local communities. So that's why I would ask you please to write in the terms that I've given. I will put um, further updates as they happen on my website and on my Facebook page. You can see exactly what is uh, happening. But in the meantime, I hope this has given you some facts. There's a lot of speculation and misinformation, understandably, going um, around. And I'll continue to post the facts on the website as and when I get them. So thank you very much for listening, and please do write.